Nestled in the South Central region of the United States, Oklahoma is home to almost 4 million people and has been dubbed the world's prison capital. Over one per 100 residents were imprisoned in 2018, making it the state with the highest incarceration rate in the United States and the world. Many of the state's crime rates, including for the likes of property crime and larceny, are higher than they are nationwide. Despite all of this, homicide rates are relatively low, but the state has an abundance of strange mysteries and unsolved cases. In today's episode, we aim to shed light on a few of these inquiries as we explore three horrific cold cases from Oklahoma. Carol Daniels. On the morning of Sunday, August 23rd, 2009, 61 year old pastor for Christ Holly Sanctifield Church in Anadarko, Carol Faye Daniels, drove the 60 miles from her home in Oklahoma City to her church. Although the establishment no longer held regular services or had a congregation, Carol still liked to attend the church every Sunday to open it for anyone who wanted to stop by. At the same time, she would often visit the locals, especially the elderly who sometimes attended. CCTV from a nearby store showed that Carol arrived at around 10 a.m. One hour and 40 minutes later, two parishioners stopped at the church and knocked after realizing the door was locked. However, nobody answered. The couple found this odd since they noticed the pastor's car parked out the front. They knocked a few more times and waited, but still, they received no answer. Concerned, the couple went to the nearby police station, and several officers were dispatched to the scene. At noon, after entering through a side door, they discovered Carol's body. The 61-year-old was laying behind the altar, completely nude and in a crucifix position. It is unclear if she was posed or simply fell this way during the attack. Carol had been stabbed in the neck more than 20 times, and her body bore 12 additional stab wounds and severe lacerations, some of which were noted to be defensive wounds. Her hair had been singed to her scalp. It was immediately clear that this murder wasn't just committed by somebody with extreme hatred towards the pastor, but by somebody who'd intended to come to the church and kill her. As her clothes were taken from the scene, and her body had been covered in a cleaning chemical, which helped to remove DNA evidence. Neither DNA nor fingerprints were found at the scene. Her clothing and the murder weapon have never been located. The horrific crime shook the local community and saw the Anadarko police reach out to the Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation. In turn, the OSBI contacted the FBI's behavioral science experts, but their efforts failed to propel the inquiry forward. Five years later, in 2014, a witness came forward and claimed they'd seen someone with a bloody knife and a black blouse, which were taken to a shed and burned. However, this crucial witness overdosed and died a few days later, leaving investigators in the dark once more. For a time, their only lead was CCTV footage from the same store which had captured Carol's arrival at the church. It showed an individual in white walking away from the building but the footage was far too grainy and low quality to be of any use, and nobody came forward with any information once it was made public. Rumors in the local community soon began to circulate. It was speculated that two violent drug dealers were behind the heinous crime after they were caught either robbing the church or caught searching for their stowed away drug money. However, many online sleuths have poked holes through the robbery theory, since it appears that the murder was premeditated, and the church was mostly disused, indicating there would be nothing worth robbing inside it. Adding to the premeditation angle is the fact that Carol's clothes were taken, her body doused in the cleaning chemical, and she had possibly been posed. The two local drug dealers in question were brought in for interviews and given polygraph tests. However, nothing further came of this. One of the dealers in question, and the main suspect in the case, was Denise Cooper, a methamphetamine distributor with a lengthy criminal history, including assault with a weapon. Cooper died from cancer in 2017. A year later, the district attorney stated he believed the case to be solved, 
but no other information about this verdict has been made public. It's unclear what evidence ties Cooper to the case. Carol's case is still unsolved. The church where she was murdered was razed to the ground in 2010 and replaced with a memorial. If you have any information about her murder, you can contact the Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation at 1-800-522-8017. Kristen Richardson. Born October 14th, 1966, Kristen Sue Richardson was a talented musician with a love of animals. She doted on her dog, Buddy, and her friends described her as someone who would go out of her way to help others. A passionate drummer, Kristen also went by her nickname, Crash, and loved listening to music. Her favorite band was Hailstorm. Kristen was last seen on May 25th, 2018, at her home in the 1300 block of Houston Street in Muskogee. The 51-year-old was packing for Rocklahoma, a music festival in the city of Pryor, where Hailstorm was performing. She told her family she would be stopping by to pick up a tent and sleeping bag, but she never showed up. Unfortunately, almost two weeks passed before the drummer was reported missing. It wasn't until June 6th that her sister filed a missing persons report. The Muskogee PD spoke with one of Kristen's roommates, a man named Carl Bryce. He said they'd attended Rocklahoma together, but that the 51-year-old had left with an unidentified woman. However, Christie's mobile phone records showed that she didn't leave Muskogee, and authorities suspected that she had never made it to the festival at all. This was further proved when there were no witnesses outside of Bryce who could place Kristen at the event. Investigators soon learned that Bryce had used the 51-year-old's Oklahoma access card after she'd gone missing. He and the pair's other roommates, Cody Ray Campbell, had also reportedly given away some of Kristen's belongings and sold others a week before a missing persons report was filed. Both men were detained as material witnesses in the case, and Campbell was later charged with possession of a stolen vehicle in connection with the truck found at the trio's residence. A month later, on July 21st, investigators went to Kristen's house to look for further evidence. They had received an anonymous tip from somebody who claimed that Cody Ray Campbell had admitted that Carl Bryce had stabbed Kristen to death. The tipster also stated that they'd seen a pile of dirt in the northwest corner of the back garden of their property, and there had been a foul smell emanating from it. During law enforcement's search of the property, they dug up the garden but found nothing. That same day, they filed first-degree murder charges against a John Doe. On November 25th, 2019, the authorities executed a search warrant and examined a property for human remains. However, they would not disclose further information about this search. This is the most recent update in Kristen's case. There have been no arrests made, and her remains have not been recovered. Campbell was sentenced to five years in prison for the stolen vehicle charge, but neither he nor Bryce has been charged or convicted in connection with the disappearance. Kristen's loved ones have stated that her disappearance is uncharacteristic. She was content with life and loved her friends, family, and dog, and would not leave any of them behind without a word. Foul play is suspected in her case. Kristen Crash Richardson was last seen on May 25, 2018 at her home in the 1300 block of Houston Street in Muskogee, Oklahoma. She is described as a Native American woman with brown hair and hazel eyes. Her hair was styled in a short faux hawk at the time of her disappearance, and she is around five foot six and weighed 200 pounds when she was last seen. She wears glasses for reading and has an eight to 10 inch tattoo of Stevie Nicks on her right calf and a scar on the back of her right leg. At the time of her disappearance, she was wearing a tan or beige shirt, camouflage print pants, and possibly a bandana on her head. If she is still alive, she will be 55 years old. If you have any information about her disappearance, you can call the Muskogee Police Department at 918-683-8000, or you can contact the Oklahoma Office of the Chief Medical Examiner on 918-295-34. Zero, zero. Aubrey Dameron Aubrey Dameron, born October 22, 1993, is described by her family and friends as a loving and generous woman with a big heart. Her uncle told People.com, she just wanted to make sure that everyone felt like they had a place in the world. Kind of like a mother hen, 
making sure that everyone was good and doing well. A citizen of the Cherokee Nation, Aubrey struggled growing up as she had begun to transition to a female at a young age, which caused her classmates to hurl slurs and sometimes even rocks in her direction. Still, every day she would return from school and tell her aunt, it's okay, Aunt Pam, I'll just keep praying for them. Aubrey dreamt of becoming a singer and actor, and even though her family were too poor to send her to acting classes, she performed at every chance she got, even if it was dancing on the coffee table and singing for her family. In August of 2018, Aubrey, now 25, moved back to Grove, Oklahoma to live with her mother, brother, and stepfather. She had previously lived in New Mexico with her boyfriend, Jay Pearson. According to Pearson, Aubrey had returned home to work on her drug and alcohol issues. But her Aunt Pam tells another story, claiming that the 25-year-old had revealed to her that she was scared of her boyfriend. Pam stated Aubrey said to her that Pearson had threatened to kill her if she was to leave him. Aubrey was known to be social. She contacted her family every day and was constantly posting on her social media accounts. But following her return home, her contacts became less frequent and her posts online became few and far between. Eventually, they both stopped altogether. In February of 2019, she had an altercation with her stepfather, who filed charges of assault and battery against her. However, the charges were dropped promptly on March 1st. The exact reason behind the fight is unknown. On March 9th, 2019, at 3.30am, Aubrey left her mother's home in Grove. She told her family that she was going to meet someone. As the area they lived in was rural, with nothing within walking distance, she had messaged several individuals in the hours beforehand, searching for someone to give her a lift. However, it's unknown if anyone picked Aubrey up when she left home. The 25-year-old's mobile phone last pinged at 3.42 a.m. near her house. It's not known at this point if it was turned off or it ran out of battery afterwards. Aubrey has never been seen or heard from since. Her family reported her missing on March 11th, the following day, her ex-boyfriend, Jay Pearson, received a phone call from a woman identifying herself as Dinette Raubotham and claiming she was a friend of Aubrey's. The woman said Aubrey was being held against her will in Ketchum, Oklahoma, for drug money that she owed someone. She said Aubrey would be released when her debt was paid, and if it wasn't, she'd be killed. Dinette was questioned by investigators, and it quickly became apparent that the whole thing was a hoax. She was arrested and subsequently charged with extortion. On March 23rd, a search for Aubrey was carried out by law enforcement. The only clue they found was a sock with what appeared to be a blood stain on it, half a mile from her home. It's unclear if the garment belonged to the 25-year-old, and while it was sent for testing, the results came back as inconclusive. Months later, on November 21st, the police received a promising lead and drained a pond in Delaware County, searching for Aubrey and her belongings. But they found nothing. Aubrey's case has grown cold since that November 2019 development. Her family feared that she became the victim of a hate crime after she headed out alone, and have stated their belief that the police didn't care about her case. They have also noted that law enforcement seems to blame Aubrey's high-risk lifestyle for her disappearance. Captain Gail Wells of the Delaware County Sheriff's Office, who is now retired, has been credited for this quote. Wells told Oxygen.com, this was the last case I ever reviewed. I kept it in my office, within reach. What made this case unique was her lifestyle. Not only was she transgender and very sexually active, but she was also a known drug abuser. Aubrey's case is still unsolved. She is considered at risk as she suffers from epilepsy and requires anti-seizure medication along with other prescription drugs, all of which she left behind on the night of her disappearance. She was last seen leaving her home in Grove on March 9th, 2019 at 3.30 a.m. after claiming she was going to meet a friend. She has not been seen or heard from since. Her mobile phone and social media appear to have remained inactive since she vanished. Aubrey is described as a Native American woman with brown hair and brown eyes. At the time of her disappearance, she was around 140 to 170 pounds and stood between 5 foot 9 and 5 foot 10. When she was last seen, she was wearing a black jacket, black skirt, black top, and black tights and boots. She has several tattoos, including a triquetra on the back of her neck, a circular design with the word Shorty on her left shoulder, and tattoos on her hips. She may use the nickname Shorty, and if she is still alive, 
she will be 28 years old. If you have any information about Aubrey's disappearance, you can call the Cherokee Nation Marshal Service at 918-207-3800, or you can contact the FBI at 1-800-225-5324.